Hello to Patters! Let's start with a disclaimer. The content of this miniseries is a primer on copyright. There will be omissions, there will be generalizations. This is not legal advice. Having stated the obvious, let's get down to business. A copyright is a limited monopoly of use and distribution that your government gives you as a creator. Its aim is to promote progress through creativity and research. Next! Just kidding. We need to spend a bit more time on the matter. Despite what US lobbyists want us to think, each country has its own copyright law. A lot of it is more or less the same, but details can and sometimes do change. Let's focus on the general picture. It all started with the birth of the printing press. Lawmakers realized this situation posed a problem. Countries producing new ideas could get new technologies. New technologies translated into advantages over rival countries. Creators needed incentives. In 1710, the British Parliament produced the first copyright law. Fast forward three centuries. Copyright has changed over time, but at its core, it is still a system to protect an author from unfair competition and appropriation of his or her work. As we said, each nation has its own copyright law. Yet, through years, international agreements have been signed. The most important of these, the so-called Berne Convention, was drafted in 1886. To give you an idea of how these things go, the United States only signed it in 1989. When you copyright a work, your government gives you some exclusive rights over it. Generally speaking, there are six basic rights. 1. The right of reproducing the work. You wrote a song. I cannot take it and record it on my own without your permission. I cannot transcribe it and publish the score. I cannot use it in an album, a film or a book without your consent. 2. The right of distributing the work. You wrote a song. Nobody can take that recording or score and distribute it in any way, physical or digital, without your permission. 3. The right of performing the work in public. I can't get down the street and perform your song for the passers-by without your consent. I can't go to the radio or on TV and play a record of your song. If there is a public listening to it, then I need your permission for the right of making a derivative work from your copyrighted work. Without your consent, I can't take your bass line and use it in my song. I can't use your lyrics changing the music. I cannot translate said lyrics in another language. I can't take your melody, even part of it, and use it in my music. It's really a by-the-book definition. If it derives from your work, I need your permission to do it. 5. The right to display the work in public. This doesn't easily apply to music, but I suppose if I hung your handwritten lyric sheet in an art gallery without your consent, that might constitute copyright infringement. 6. The moral rights over your work. You have the right to have your name always associated with your copyrighted work, even if you decided to give the other rights away. You also have the right to object to any modification or distortion of the work, which would hurt your reputation as a result. Moral rights are the one type of rights whose extent and application changes the most from country to country. Whew, that seems pretty sweet, right? Too sweet, maybe. Check out the second episode of this copyright miniseries to get an overview of the limitations on these rights. Time to close shop. This was Simon Mas. Stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye bye. Simon Mas, music you love.